I'm a self-identified pacifist, and I'm considered by some people to be a liberal. Having said that, one of the things that, uh, one of the debates that I like to get into, that I like to chime in on, is this debate over the size of the U.S. military and the raw power that it uh, commands. Well, one can make all sorts of cases as to why it should be downsized and what um, better things the money can be spent upon. I understand America's concern for its health care system. To me, that's kind of an internal debate that um, me as a Canadian, I, I don't really think that I have a, a place in that debate. I can say that I'm glad that I have a publicly funded health care system in Canada, but how Americans choose to manage their own internal affairs is for Americans to decide. But in terms of the wider world, um, whether we like it or not, the United States military is a force for stability in the world, and it might be the linchpin of world stability. Yes, nobody likes what the U.S. military is doing in Iraq. Uh, plenty of people have issues with uh, what they're doing in Afghanistan, what they could conceivably do in all kinds of other places. But let's just say, even if the U.S. military didn't downsize, let's just say that um, <clears throat> President Obama just uh, said, um, okay, all military bases, U.S. military bases overseas are now closed, and all military personnel are going to be brought back uh, to either American territories or um, the continental United States. Well, watch what happens if that takes place. Watch how China decides to solve its dispute with Taiwan. Watch what North Korea gets up to. Um, watch what the Japanese do when they suddenly realize that the great big huge shield, the U.S. Pacific Fleet, um, is now gone. Watch what they do. Watch how suddenly their military budget goes through the roof. Um, watch what Iran decides to do vis-a-vis -vis Saudi Arabia. Uh, watch what Iran decides to do vis-a-vis -vis any number of its neighbors. Even in issues like um, smoldering Balkan conflicts that could at any moment break out, generally the ultimate sobering factor in all of this is the ultranationalists, the militants in that region, have to look over their shoulders at what the Americans are going to do if they decide to fool around and get crazy nationalist fire from above. That's what happens when, uh, when the, the stability of Europe uh, is menaced by uh, ultra-nationalism. I think that the world is always going to have a love-hate relationship with the U.S. military. Um, but I think it's good for us to remind ourselves just how necessary that military presence really is. Somebody's going to be um, occupying the position of the United States globally. There are any number of people who would just love to leap at the chance of a power vacuum created by American withdrawal in the world. Let's just say that we do uh, see all these um, U.S. military commitments overseas um, abolished and the U.S. military uh, called back to the United States, even if, the, again, if this doesn't mean downsizing of, uh, of the American military. Who do you think is going to actually fill in the gap, the vacuum created? Suddenly the U.S. military presence globally doesn't look so bad, does it? <laughs> Thank you.